A lot of you, if, especially if you're going to the health professions, you'll be quickly familiar with this. So what we have here is a patient monitor. And you probably see all these lights, all these graphs, all these numbers. And in ca case of serious conditions, you might hear all these alarms going off. Well, it's not really like really drastic alarms, but you know what an uh, alarm sounds like. All right, so then let's talk about patient health. Now, let's go to Top Hat real quick. And which of these are the four vital signs? And four of these are considered, in general, the vital, four vital signs. And on all patient monitors, well, unless it's, there's some weird ones in other countries, they will show these vital signs. All right, let's see the responses. So here's what people said. So most people said, okay, nobody said blood glucose, but the top four seem to be body, blood pressure, body temperature, heart rate and respiratory rate. So how, again, respiratory rate is basically how many breaths you take per minute. And yeah, the pop, most four popular are the most, are the four vital signs. And now oxygen saturation is important, but it's not universally accepted as the fifth vital sign. It is important, but again, these are the four vital signs that are pretty much accepted by most institutions. All right, so then this is a patient monitor. So what would you pretty much see in the patient monitor? You see all these graphs. So today's lecture is going to be focusing on one of the main vital signs. And can you guess what it is? It's going to be the heart rate. So what do we see here? We see this tracing of a line. We see these numbers. So we're going to talk about how to interpret this very basically. The thing is that even at the med school level, it takes years to learn, interpret all everything you can get from a, what we call an EKG or ECG. So, but let's talk about that heart rate. So heart rate, so it is a rate, it is some sort of speed, right? So what happens, it's usually something over time whenever you have some sort of rate. Now a normal adult resting heart rate, so this is the AHA and the NI National Institutes of Health definition, and even your OpenStax textbook uses this definition, and I think Martini also uses the same cutoff for a normal heart rate. So it's 60 to 100 beats per minute, so 60 to 100. And adult, let's just say any, someone over 18. Thing is that this will be our reference range for fill 142, so you definitely should know these values. Now thing is that age and health also affect heart rates. So when a newborn a baby, or when we have a newborn baby, typically like they have a faster heart rate. So children and babies, they have faster heart rates than an adult. And as we get older, I mean, still around 60 to 100, but the maximum heart rate also decreases with age. So you, th that's the normal heart rate at rest we're seeing with the 60 to 100. But as we get older, we can, or if you exercise, you can boost up your heart rate. But as we age, that ability for the heart rate to increase declines as we age. Now, again, uh, if you're going to pediatrics and you love children, maybe you want to know about the newborns and children, but it can get complicated. I think this, let's start off with the base value for now. And actually, not only uh, age, but also things like athletic conditioning. The thing is that people like Olympic athletes, they'll typically, their hearts have been conditioned to the point where that they don't, or their hearts don't beat as fast as or they don't need to be as fast as an everyday adult who doesn't exercise at that level. So sometimes it might not be unusual to see a well-conditioned athlete with a heart rate near the 40s. And why? Because they're so good at, their hearts are so conditioned at pumping blood efficiently, it doesn't need to be as quickly to circulate enough cardiac output or circulate blood at that rate. So this is what you... This is actually more like a cartoon of ECG, but this is what, if you've seen this like in, in like TV, on a patient monitor, or video games, you pretty, see, pretty much see that are familiar with this pattern. And what we're seeing here is a printout. So again, that would be, the previous was what we would see on a patient monitor. But what we see here is a printout of the heart wave, so what we, or the ECG pattern. So Sometimes it's called EKG and sometimes it's called ECG. So the thing is that I think it was was it someone in German who who discovered it, but initially like cardio is spelled with a K in that case, so that's why it was called EKG. ECG, same thing. It's just like we're spelling it in English. Alright, so how do you get an ECG? Well, what you have to do is place these electrodes and what we see here with the dots here are where you can place the leads and the EKG. Now the thing is that 
or actually for those of you who are interested in working in the hospital but you're not sure if you want to be like a doctor or a nurse I mean there's also specialized jobs where all their whole job the EKG technicians their whole job is just to set up these leads and stick them on a patient and make sure they're in the right place and the thing is that there's various anatomical landmarks to make sure that is oriented correctly so you still have to know your anatomy but some people make some that's how they make a living I think when I looked up the salary, I think here in Hawaii, it's like 20 to $22 an hour just to be an EKG tech. So you don't necessarily need to be a doctor or a nurse. Yeah, so then what we have here is the heart. And what do you notice about the heart and how these leads are placed, especially the ones that are going across the chest? Well, notice that they're kind of following the direction of the depolarization of the heart. So remember the conducting system? It starts off with the SA node and then goes to the internal pathways and to the AV node and the bundle of his, bundle branches, Purkinje fiber. So it goes from the base of the heart toward the apex of the heart. And actually, I think I didn't cover that yet. So it's kind of funny. Usually when you think the apex, you think of the top of something. Like when you think of the apex of a mountain, it's the top of a mountain. But the apex is actually pointing down toward the left. So the apex of the heart is actually here. Ooh, I think they're not up. I think they're on. I see the sides are available on Top Hat. Maybe something would happen with Lao Lima. Yeah, so then they should be the slides should be available on Top Hat. Yeah, because I think that's what I'm seeing on my end. They should be available. If not, then they'll be up soon. All right, so then what we have here is that we have depolarization going this way. So what we have here. And the other thing is that not only can you have those leads there, you can also have leads going this way on the limbs. So what we have here, we have that on the left and right arm, we have that on the left and right leg. And it doesn't necessarily need to be all the way distal over here. You can move these leads a little closer toward the, the trunk of the body. So these are what we call limb leads. And when you're looking at a patient monitor, what you're typically seeing is lead two. And lead two, is actually going from this right arm to the left leg. And notice that it kind of follows the path of depolarization. So it kind of gives you the biggest or the most readable, the most like it follows the direction of or roughly follows the direction of depolarization of the heart the best. So that's why it kind of gives you a good representation of the overall electro uh, conducting activity of the heart. All right, so then when you go here to electrocardiogram, this is what you see. You see, you see this repeated pattern in the normal, a normal heart. And what we have here is the five waves. And sometimes there is a sixth wave. There's a U wave, but I think that's more for advanced classes or if you're going to the to the field. But PQRST, you definitely should know. And what we have here are so in general, there you have like the, the waves here. So this is what we have here: PQRST. And why are they called PQRST? For, for what I read, it's like, okay, the guy who discovered this, he, he said, okay, maybe these things, there's more waves, and let's start off somewhere near the middle of the alphabet. So that's why he chose those letters. And then he realized, hey, these five waves just repeat over and over. So that's how we ended with PQRST. Yeah, that's a <laughs> lack of a better explanation. That's how it goes, or that's why I read. Um, and then you also have things called segments. So when you're doing studies on the heart and looking at different diseases, sometimes you might look at the timing between these waves. So in general, the segments, notice that they're a little more, they're smaller than the intervals. So segments are pretty much between these waves. And actually the QRS waves, they're in typical, when you're just looking at EKG, you refer to them as kind of like, a, you take them all together. I mean, there are special, diseases or conditions of the heart or sometimes like th that can cause a difference in the QRS wave but for now let's just consider them as what we call the QRS complex so they're pretty much always bunched together in a normal heart